Hello everybody and welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fantasy Premier League. My name's Serge. And my name is James. And give or take, I would have said halfway through the three o'clocks yesterday, I think for a lot of people the world didn't revolve around Fantasy Premier League. <laughs> I saw a number of tweets from people that were reasonably pissed off with how their game weeks were going and so on and so on. But... Let's start by just time stamping and dating this so people know when and where we're recording and where we are in the middle of this game week. It's Friday morning, give or take 10 o'clock. And nine games from the Boxing Day have been completed. One to go today, which is Wolves, Manchester City. Um, and then we will officially almost be halfway through the season. Correct. Uh, how many points are you on in total? 1,061 with KDB to go tonight. So say he scored a four or five point at 1,065. If you doubled that, so that's 2,130 points. Would you be happy with that at the end of the season? No. No, you want 2,400? 300? <laughs> if I get 2,400, I might finish first, mate. <laughs> yeah. ah, maybe not. I'd want to I'd wanna beat my best ever points total if it's at all possible which was 2268 so 100 points more than doubling what you have now which, which with all the chips in hand that got me possible. that got me 21k in 1617 that probably it might be it might be similar totals mm. this year it depends a lot on captaincy's second half of the season i would guess if if something like Jamie Vardy is sustainable over the course of the whole season then yeah. then it will be higher than what we may anticipate at the moment a lot of the people that were struggling with the game halfway through the the 3 o'clock like i say and did own rashford and trent and what have you and so uh, the game week did recover in the evening uh, especially for me as well it did recover with robo and, and trent um, and we'll talk about Trent because this has to go down as the, the TAA show this week, surely. It's uh, FPL folklore, that last night. Um, record for a defender? I, I think it I is. I don't know, but it might be. I think it is. I'll tell you why. Because you remember earlier in the season, uh, Lundstrom picked up a 21-pointer. And uh, that was the same week I remember I went on uh, FPL FYI. And the question, the conundrum then was... What was the last time a defender had scored 21 points? And it was early, It was the uh, last season, uh, Shaw, Fabian Shaw picked up a 21-pointer for Newcastle. And prior to that, it was a defender for Burnley. You'll remember who? Graham someone or other. Alexander. Graham Alexander. Was the penalty taker. Uh, years ago. We're talking about 12 years ago. And that was a 21-pointer as well. But I don't think there was anyone ever that had topped 21 points as a defender. So 24 from Trent is uh, tidy. That's monstrous. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? Um, but you were on wild card. Yep. Tell us about your successful <laughs> well, wild card. Trent stayed in it, so it was. Yeah, right. mate. But I did. I did have a sneaky at your wild card, and I couldn't remember when halfway through the game whether you'd kept Trent or Robbo, and I felt like keeping Robbo was the kind of thing you would do just to be a little bit different. And in the end, it wasn't. And thank God for that. I have sympathy for those who sold Trent pre blank and haven't gone back. Yep. I've got some sympathy. I've got less sympathy for those who left him on the bench. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have I haven't benched Trent or Robbo all season. I can't see how, how you can. It's their attacking returns. Clean sheets are the, are the icing on the cake. It's the attacking returns that is the cake. Um, sneakily and quietly, three clean sheets in a row for Liverpool all of a sudden. Um, and I know both those defenders have had a rest in one or t'other. But still, picking up 31 points from these two um, goes to show why they're just so good. I spent, and I'll, I'll come back on to my wild card, but I spent the majority of that game uh, with anguish not owning Andrew Robertson. Yep. I've got to get him back in. I, Andrew Robertson was not in my wild card. TA is now the highest point scorer from a defender. Yeah, and he'll finish the season as the top yeah. the highest scorer in points defend, as he should, mm -hmm. at his value, let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, he's the most expensive But, but yeah, he will. And at the end of the season, Robertson will be second. Yeah. The only thing that will stop that, in my opinion, is his injuries. Or VVD. Yeah, these guys, look, John Lundstrom is a hold all season. We're not, we're not now saying that John Lundstrom's a bad player or for FPL or, or anything like that, or these Leicester guys aren't going to still do well. 
You want the top top, get them Liverpool boys. Yep. I've maintained it all season long and, and I'm see see where I say I've got sympathy with those who came off Trent and haven't gone back yet. I have them sympathy because that's exactly what I've done with Robertson. Mm-hmm. And there was a possibility going into my wild card that I'd, I'd mentioned there was a possibility that I might come out with no Liverpool or no City bar Kevin De Bruyne. But I couldn't take out Trent. No. I just couldn't see it. And it certainly never went through my mind to leave him on the bench and play someone like Martin Kelly instead. And I'm sure that's probably the sort of thing that a lot of people have ended up doing. What did you do with your wild card in the end? There was only one name in your wild card that I thought, um, what are you doing here? But apart from that, we'll, pretty we'll, tried and trusted. We'll, we'll cover that. So I only made uh, six changes, basically, which was a change. Both goalkeepers I changed Steckelenberg as backup goalkeeper because I think he's the only one who's, if something happened to Pickford, has got a shot of playing. He's the only one regularly as number two at the moment. I went with Aaron Ramsdale in goal, sold Tom Heaton before his 10-pointer. It wasn't all good this week. But I no. but I feel that making that change, although it looked ridiculous yesterday with Villa playing Norwich and Bournemouth playing Arsenal, that's now saved me a transfer further down the line. I can go with Ramsdale for a while. It covers a good set of fixtures. I might even go to Fabianski in a little yeah. while once he's back. So I think he, you've said it yourself. I think he'll make a big difference for West Ham. I went for Victor Lindelof. That's the that's the question mark of all the players <laughs> Q, you could have picked. Q massive gasping. The reason I went to Lindelof was I'd made a decision I wasn't going to go back to Robertson until after the Wolves game. So I wanted a placeholder there just literally for two games. Every option that I wanted to go for was a fullback, be it an Aurea, uh, even Sadibi was someone I'd strongly been thinking about. And I just thought, mm, a lot of these guys are playing two games in three days. I'm not sure I want to go for a fullback here for such a short-term punt. So I went for the consistency of Lindelof, who played 90 minutes every game, bar an illness, at, uh, ironically, away to Newcastle early in the season. And went, you know what, if he picks me up a clean sheet against either Newcastle or Burnley, that will do job done. So we'll let you know if that was a mistake after the weekend. And almost certainty that before Liverpool play Sheffield United, Robertson will be back in for Lindelof and I'll be changing something else. The reason I didn't propel Robertson straight back in, which I had, although I got the points elsewhere, was trying to eke out value on other players such as Jack Grealish, who yep. I bought very early in the week and was very close to going up to 0.2. I thought, well, I'll hold him through for the, the Norwich fixture and then make a decision on that afterwards. I was very close to going, instead of Grealish, I was very close to going Moutinho mm -hmm. and then Robertson instead of Lindelof. So in terms of what I've lost out on here, it's not a lot because I've got Grealish's Return. six points, Robertson seven. Yeah. Kind of another here and all that. So it's fine. So I'll make that move. I, I just need to decide if I'm going to bomb out Grealish or Zahar before this week which I don't feel like with Grealish playing Watford and Zaha playing Southampton, I particularly need to force to do for a minus four. So I think I'll probably hold on an extra week and then make that change going into Liverpool's fixture against Sheffield United. And I bought in the Spurs hitman, Ali and Harry Kane as captain. Everything else stayed the same. So Trent stayed, Lundstrom, Kelly, Rico, Cantwell, De Bruyne, Zaha, Vardy, Rashford. Was That's... The full what I ended up with, so only six changes. I recorded a stream in the in the ground pre-game yesterday, explaining my reasons for my decisions. And one of the things I said is, I didn't really want it. The only the, the benefit that what it's really done me is Spurs I've, players I've got really those off Kane and Ali. Yeah, yeah, the Spurs players were the one that felt like halfway through the three o'clock is that it was going to be you own Spurs assets. You've been brave enough to dive in on them. You win, and if you don't, you haven't. Uh, until Trent decided to well, have yeah, his... Yeah, pre-Man so. United fixture was looking... The average was bad across the board with you saying three fixtures left. And a lot, obviously, a lot of Liverpool Ownership City, in those, yeah. United, Leicester, whatever, still to go, even like your Jimenez's and stuff. But uh, yeah, I was well clear of the average at that stage as well. So then yeah. to have Trent last night just topped Helped it you. So 75k game week rank, 74,300 really. 
um, which is very good. So uh, 300,000 rise up to about 285,000. 285k overall just having a look that's very good so now you're really looking to get into that top 100k in the now next few push weeks. On. now i'm with a squad that i'm happy with basically bar robertson i know the moves i want to make i'm already thinking about how i'm gonna sell kane and ali not like now but yeah in a few weeks it do i do it before we play liverpool do i do it before we play man city in february certainly kane's not staying in long term i can't recommend going for harry kane there's there's no value in him everything statistically pointed against him i just know new with the fixtures that we have the reliability of the minutes from him over this period i could put him in and have blind faith and captain him and it would either work or it didn't and on the first game it's done me okay yep he might blank against norwich at the weekend and it's then not necessarily such a great move but that's what I'm going to do. And as soon as I'm in a position where I'm not captaining Kane, I'll sell. I honestly might sell him straight after Norwich because I'm not sure if I'll captain him against Southampton. I think at the moment, see how Leicester do at West Ham at the weekend, but I might well captain Kane again at Southampton. And then he's straight out. And then he's done. Unless I decide, unless I look at it and then go the two fixtures afterwards, Watford away and Norwich at home, am I then going to captain him again in those two? In which case it's probably worth me holding through the Liverpool fixture and just suffering it. We know he can return in those games, not like yeah, Card yeah, scored at yeah. Anfield earlier in the season. So Kane is just purely a choice in terms of, am I captaining? Am I captaining? And the second I decide that I'm in a position again, like I was earlier in the season where I feel like I can't, then it'll go. Yep. Uh, I ended up on 50 points this week, which doesn't seem like I, I'm in a real no man's land now. You because could finish I've, great here though. I've got three players playing tonight. Um, which is Kevin De Bruyne, Captain Raheem Sterling and uh, Raul Jimenez. So three big hitters that I think we'll all hopefully touch would play tonight. I don't think City can afford to go uh, weak. As much as the, the title's done and dusted, they can't um, show that it's done and dusted. They do have to put up the illusion of still fighting for can it. Can they afford so. to play De Bruyne and Sterling twice in three days though uh well it's, up to, question, it's, it? it's up to the it's up to pep now isn't it really but yeah so 50 points uh of which 41 came from heaton trent and robbo um i had a blank from lundstrom madison blank vardy blank and richarlison got me a clean sheet point but that was it um but i had the move to make i had two moves to make this week so i had actually to take a minus four as well so really i'm on 46 um, my game week rank is 1.37 million, but I've gone up 100k to 943k. Even 10, 12 points tonight will push me up to 550k. So that'll be a half a million rise in a game week. You could finish this game week on more points than me. Quite possibly. I mean, Raheem Sterling, it's all about Raheem Sterling now. Um, a single return from Raheem Sterling's 14, 15 points from him, plus five or six from the other two will get me 20 points plus. I'll be happy with that. So yeah, really want 65 to 70 points this week and then I'll be happy with that. And I'll, I'll push really up into the top 600,000. And Hopefully that stays as my new kind of bench level to keep building on top of. But Sun to Sterling and uh, Yarmolenko to Campwell were the two moves I made this week. You finally got rid of Yarmolenko? Finally got rid of Yarmolenko. Hell. Finally. <laughs> Even having to take another drop on him. He's only sat in your team for about two months too yeah, long. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> but I just had other moves elsewhere. I had to say my first hit of the season and I, I didn't really want him. your first done hit? Of the whole season. Wow. Yeah, 19 game weeks No wonder in. Yarmolenko had been sitting there yeah, so long. <laughs> yeah. Too tight to take hits right now, but... Uh, we'll see. I might be more aggressive moving forward. Um, one, so all in all, quite happy with this game. One of the things I definitely want to be is more aggressive in the second half of the season. Yeah, let's see. I'm not doing that shit like if we get to the blank game week this year. I mean, I'll probably free hit in the blank game week 31, that is, to clarify. But I'm not doing that shit like I did last year. Where I was Dead like, ending. Buying players you don't not, want just to get well, Not even that, but like on the day, not going Jamie Vardy away to Huddersfield. That yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, just get I'm going to get the guys in that I want. Yeah. Uh, if it means 10, 8, 12 points and so be it uh, in terms of hits. So yeah, all in all, uh, not a great day of football, but ended up a handful of, a sprinkling of assets that returned and then a lot of blanks as well. And um, you can never count your chickens too early until the game week is done. Like I wasn't doing very well at all until 
uh, the Liverpool game when I surged ahead because of Trent. So it's one of those, don't panic too early. I just feel like don't panic too early. Just let the whole game week play out and then you can see what happens. No, and obviously, look, there's... We, we're quite positive this morning because we both got Trent, let's be yes, honest. Yeah. And if you haven't, you're probably feeling the opposite. Look, I mean, it is what it is, right? You you, you probably had that Lundstrom Hall of, a few months back and a lot of other people maybe didn't. Uh, or maybe you didn't have that one either. Yeah. <laughs> if you're Andy, let's talk FPL. Morning, pal. How are you doing? Yeah. <sighs> Move on. Best thing you can do is what I always say. Once the game week starts, you've made your decisions start thinking about the next one. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, let's talk about some of these games then. Uh, there's nine games that took place yesterday, uh, like we mentioned, and we can rattle through them all. There's some that have no kind of FPL relevance now, really, because we're not picking players out of these sides potentially, but some interesting results along the way. Um, yeah, I mean, like the shock defeat for shock, I say in inverted commas, for Chelsea. Uh, has it had a bit of a mix around at the bottom end of the table now uh, with West Ham really getting sucked into that relegation fight, which we were already in. I mean, a week ago I was saying I don't think we're going to get relegated. Looking at the table when you're only one point outside the drop zone does still give you a bit of the jitters. Feel good, does um, it? So yeah, there we go. <laughs> Spurs 2, Brighton 1. Did you watch the game? Uh, I watched the first uh, 50 minutes, I'd say 60 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't uh, particularly exciting. I thought Brighton played really well. They were they were good. Whammed after fifty minutes, did you fall asleep? <laughs> nah. Then then you then Harry Kane scored, and that was that. Um, and you came back. You came back well in the second half, I thought. But Brighton definitely played the better football. I was disappointed when I saw Mope was benched or kind of rotated as opposed to benched. Let's say because um, he wasn't dropped. Really, it was rotation more than anything else. When I looked at the uh, the lineup. That sofa score had they had um, their, their guy what's his name Azlade Al Zadi Zate as a second striker alongside Connolly but he, he from what in, you said he played in midfield, played in midfield. Uh, Kane and Ali on the score sheet Ali's the one that I'm looking at thinking 8.9 million returning regularly he's a set and forget isn't he almost I don't know about that. I think further down the line, you'd prefer to have Son. Once mm. he's back, I would have thought. And you won't be looking at Son till after the Liverpool fixture. End of January it is really, isn't it? Before we get yeah, back to Hung Min Son. And then you're looking at three games afterwards, Man City. Are you going to make that move? Ali, he's obviously someone you can, you can look at. He was a bit closer to Kane. I mean, certainly in the second half, he basically went to right back up front. In the first half, he kept ending up deep because we're so shit on the ball. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking for Pochettino's phone number at half time, as many of you might have Yeah, saw on Twitter. Where is on he? On Twitter. Like, I was properly depressed at half time. Really depressed. Uh, I was also depressed by the fact that the emotion got killed out of me again from VAR. Ah, uh, yeah. Talk about that first goal. So. I didn't move out of my seat. I didn't say a word. Really? Yep. I sat there and when it happened, because I sit opposite side of the camera to what you would watch on the TV, uh, kind of in line with the edge of the penalty area, I was certain that he was offside. Really? Yeah, certain. So I, I watched it on telly. Um, I didn't think he was offside just because, I, I, I don't know, there, there wasn't that many protests from Brighton or from what I could see and I just thought, okay, straightforward. He's gone through, broken through, goal. Job done. Um, but looking back at it, the replay, I mean, you're annoyed about VAR because of the emotion killer, right? Well, I, I, I didn't move. I was motionless because I was convinced that he was offside. And my dad's looking at me like, what's wrong with you? I'll sit down, mate. He's offside. Mm. That's literally, I, I've just watched, not only my team just score, my FPL captain as well. Yeah, and yeah. I'm sitting there motionless. I, Shit, uh, this, isn't it? I was more annoyed about the uh, lack of uh, clarity and whether he was offside or not. And okay, you're saying that he was clearly offside, but uh, I, I thought it was Dan Byrne that played him on or off or whatever. But it was like his arm was sticking out, but his feet were behind where his body was. So are we measuring feet to feet? Are we measuring body to body? Are we measuring last possible piece? We're of, measuring armpits and bollocks and Yellow lines and red and, lines and blue yeah. lines. And um, yeah. it's just not clear and obvious. And at this point, I... 
I, they could just as easily have been wrong. Here's, I just don't. Here's, here's where I'm at with VAR. I mean, everybody knows my opinion that I'd been it. But the number one thing for me is like this, this with offsides and us not being able to celebrate goals. I, I'm going to go over a rehash theme here. But until something can happen that is instantaneous, that tells me if a player is on or offside, be it a hooter that goes off in the stadium that's controlled by technology and we might be 10, 15 years away from that. We might be a year away. I don't know. But like, scrap this shit. Please, please get it out of my game. Because then I'm sitting there at half time. I've watched turgid crap for 45 minutes. Um, I don't even think Brighton were that particularly good. I think they, they're they a good side. I enjoy watching them. They, they break the lines really well. But I didn't think, oh, Brighton have... I didn't feel like Brighton played against us the way Sheffield United played against us earlier in the yeah. season when Sheffield United went in at nil nil. I'm 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 like emotions killed me. This with the VA, I'm like, what is this now? This ain't football anymore. No. And we won. I still went home pissed off because it was shit. The only positive I took out of the game was the the fight and the determination that was shown, to be honest, by some individuals, particularly in the second half. Like Lucas Moura was bang average yesterday but he worked so hard Kane and Delhi, particularly Kane off the ball defensively and once we went in front a shift he put in for the team uh, Davinson Sanchez was good again o Aurea he's trying he's limited but he's trying <laughs> um, and we won but I didn't go home happy I, I can't go and pay my money and watch that and feel like oh this is good I was more cheered up when Chelsea lost and then I and then I reflect back on it again and I'm like, oh God, we blew that last week, didn't we? Because now instead of be we could be like three points ahead of them now. Yeah. With them going to Arsenal and us going to Norwich and thinking, wow, we could actually be putting daylight on this if we weren't so you're, you're, um, shit and average. You're doing to the top four what you did to the Champions League last year, right? Sneaking away. You're going to end up in the top four having not played well. Um, and not and it just being like how is how have you got there having not played well and just not be firing whoever finishes fourth we did like a uh, on Christmas Day we did our best awards of the decade which is well yeah. worth having a, a listen back to you don't have to do it now like you could go back and listen to it in two weeks it's, it's a bit of fun if we were doing worst teams to ever finish fourth we'll do this in 10 years it will be whoever finishes fourth this, this year, year. Yeah, I wouldn't surprise if me. Chelsea with, and I know Kovacic didn't play for them yesterday. If they don't finish fourth, they need absolutely shooting. Because mm. this Spurs team, and I know United were good yesterday, but like the competition is bang average. Yep. And they sh you can't believe that Chelsea have, have played West Ham, Bournemouth and Southampton at home. Lost all three of them without conceding in a row. Mm. How does that happen? Yeah. And yet they'll, they'll, they played well at our place. They were brilliant. Well deserved to win. And I wouldn't be surprised they went to Arsenal and played well and won. Yeah. Um, B B Brighton looking over their shoulders at relegation or you still think that actually they'll be no. okay? Because no. looking looking at the table now, it doesn't make pretty reading for uh, West Ham, Bournemouth, Brighton, Southampton and or Everton all within touching distance of that that. 18th spot. I'm absolutely certain they'll be fine. They play too good football. They're watching them, like how calm they are on possession compared to my lot. And Sissoko's like, he played all right again. Yes, he was another one who worked really hard, but he bumbling for himself. And I'm watching, I'm going, Jesus Christ, Del Stevens looks like a good footballer now. Moy can play and Gross can play. That Alzati is a good player actually. Yeah. And yet they left out Players like I'm, I'm looking at when I saw the team, I'm like, Shalotto at right wing back, no more pay. What's going on here? This is a bit random. And then on reflection, you think actually the target for them in need of points, which they still are, yeah, is going to win the game Saturday against Bournemouth rather than mm. anything they got yesterday. It was, was a bonus, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think if like Montoya had played right wing back, I think actually. They went to three at the back, which was they, we suspected they might and what other teams might copy, having seen how Wolves and Chelsea played against Spurs with three at the back. But I think if they'd played the 4-2-2-2, two, 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 which they played against us in game week, uh, I think it was eight, I think they would have had more success and they would have given us more damage because the one thing they missed certainly yesterday was that bit of X factor. You only really felt they were going to score from distance or a set piece. Connolly's a, a real live wire, but I missed more pay yesterday. Mm. And I think if you want a one-week punt, 
or you're looking now to get cheap striker, go more pay. He'll play on Saturday. Yeah, we talked about uh, my, my potential captaincy options on Saturday uh, a little early off air. Mope may be the one, you know, at home to uh, Bournemouth, but I hate having a captain in the early game because it sets, all, sets well, like, your game like week me up. me and Kane yesterday. Yeah. I'm doing that after. That was pissed me off at half time. <laughs> and the captain. I mean, it was like, well done, my list of priorities at half time yesterday. I was like, yeah, that as well. <laughs> oh, salt in the wounds. They've got a good run of basically up until they go to Molyneux in game week 29 walls. Uh, Bournemouth, Chelsea, Everton, Villa, Bournemouth, West Ham, Watford, Sheffield United, Palace. Mm. All right, up to Sheffield United, game week 27. Sorry, Tom Mo and Blades fans. <laughs> but yeah, you can go on, Brian. Mm. I, I think offensively, it's still going to give you problems defensively. Matt Ryan's solid goalkeeper choice. Yeah. If you want to go down that route, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Webster's picked up a couple of goals this season, three in total now, two in the last five, 4.4 million. So they are still cheap. And yeah. I think we'll talk about some cheap defenders. Um, it's probably bit, reliability but... on them as well. Mm. Like Webster, Webster, Dunk, Burn feels safe in that team, whether they play three or four at the back. It feels quite safe. Yep. So, you know, Burn played left-sided centre-half yesterday and then later in the game went to left-back. And actually, with them chasing the game, they went very direct to him. Like, he finished the game basically at centre-forward, which is worth noting. 6'6", six, six, isn't he? Yeah. And he's not like... 6'6"? Um, six, six. He's 6'6", six, six, Dan Byrne, yeah. That's a animal. That's big. That's and he's Peter not, Crouch levels. He's, of... You know how, like, Crouch, he was awkward? Yeah. Burns not. Like, he's powerful. It's amazing how athletic he is for his size. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe go that way. But I, I don't know. I certainly think they'll be safe. They, they play good football. Yeah, I, I don't buy that, uh, if I'm honest with you. I think they still need to start turning some draws into wins if they're going to They get will win the next eight game weeks or mm, so. Well, well, we'll know very soon where they are. Uh, let's talk about Villa, Norwich. Norwich, from my point of view, from an FPL point of view, are done. Like, other than Todd Cantwell, because of his price... There isn't anyone in that side that I look at and I think, you know what, I want to get you in. That There's better alternatives everywhere. Plus now they're sitting bottom of the table on 12 points. Double that at the end of the season, 24 points. That's relegation. It looks like the way it's going as well, the actual relegation total might be a bit higher than what we expected because we're yeah. getting so many mad results. Uh, mm. Teams picking up away, away results like Southampton, which we might not have risked. Expect Southampton up to 14th now. Yeah. They looked buried a few weeks back. Like and that's, double... that's all it will take for Norwich or Watford is to have them like back-to-back -back results, which Watford feel like they might be in the momentum of doing currently. And that will change. Uh, Norwich assets. No. There was a bit of a gamble on, on Pookie, actually. Yeah. Stop now again, though, isn't it? Really, two blanks in a row for him. Three blanks out of the last four. You can it was, spin these stats it, however you it was want. Was just looking at targeting Villa, mm. and one I probably of the three o'clock games. That's Villa Norwich is probably the game I watched the most of. One because I'm going to see Grealish's position, but actually it was obvious within ten seconds that Villa were playing a four four one one slash four two three one, and Grealish was at ten. Yeah. But one of the players that really stood out yesterday was Max Ahrens at right back. Actually picked up a bonus point in spite of losing 1-0 in the game, which is mad, really. Mm. But that's because his sheer amount of chances he created, amount of crosses he got into the box. Norwich should have won this game. And I'm not saying look at it from a Norwich perspective, but it might be worth looking at from a Villa perspective. Adam had warned, didn't he? Like, defensively, they're in real trouble at the moment. Too so, open. Like, yeah, I missed the heat and points yesterday. If Douglas Louise doesn't get himself back on the line, then that gets blown apart. I think they might be at this minute as weak as Norwich defensively. And that's going to put you in a bad place. It's funny to say that off the back of a clean sheet. They haven't got enough attacking options. Like, where's the up front? Rubbish. Let's not lie about it anymore. He's nothing. A Trezeguet and El Ghazi going to contribute enough? He was uh, £40 million pounds was Wesley, no, 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 they didn't pay a lot for him. No? I thought it was uh, expensive. Maybe nah. I'm confusing his price with Joe Linton's uh, price. Between 
15 and 20, I think they paid for him. Joe Linton was, 40. was a lot. Yeah. yeah. Similar to uh, 22 million for uh, for Wesley. I think Joe Linton's better than Wesley. There you go. I said it. I think Joe Linton's got actually a bit of link up play about him. Actually, yeah. as seen in the goal for Newcastle yesterday. Wesley, I just don't see anything. No. He's not. Like he's not a threat in the air, particularly for his size. I wouldn't say his hold up. His hold up's okay, but like he doesn't worry you. You'd be like, oh, we're up against him today. Okay, mm. that's that's fine. So it needs Grealish has got to keep stepping up. And from an FPL perspective, you know he's the man, and it is still tempting. Six point four million. You you have him as a couple of week punt and maybe come off him so that you can get Andrew Robertson well, it, back in. It might be longer. I've obviously got him and Zahari in at, at similar values. I took the choice to go. I very nearly went instead of Grealish, Matinho, and in, then instead of Lindelof, Alexander, Ar um, sorry, Robertson. Well, like 0 0.9 in the bank. So I could just reverse that move again this weekend. It feels a bit wrong forcing that as a minus four though. But I think if you're not already on Grealish, my instinct is maybe not to be. Yep. I feel like fixture-wise is about to turn. That's now a more difficult fixture at Watford at the weekend than I think it had originally looked. I think Watford will probably beat them at the weekend. I think it's a, it's one of the most interesting fixtures coming up this weekend. It'll mm. be interesting to look at. I, I don't think I can get Grealish in at the moment based on the squad structure. So, um, But if you're on him, stick on him for a little while. I'm just kind of waiting to see in that number 10 role. He could have one monster week where he picks up a real big double digit return anytime. Uh, so Jack Grealish is the one to really look at from, from a Villa point of view. Position wise, it was encouraging yesterday, mm. but... He still needs to have the players around him. Yeah. So I think like he has a good relationship with Hurahan because I think Hurahan's a good footballer. I think it doesn't help Villa defensively in the way uh, probably a deeper pivot of Nakamba and Douglas Louise would. But it's better link up for Grealish. He needs people on his level as well as he can be. It will become like the issue it sometimes is for Zahar at Palace. Right, we're just going to overcompensate for you because we know you're you're the man. So I think them playing with Hurahan, who could break into the box, would be more beneficial for, for Grealish, like obviously with McGinn was. Yeah. Uh, Bournemouth won, Arsenal won. Let's talk about that game. Uh, from all the reports, if, if you look at it, everybody who's an Arsenal fan or uh, Adam, our Arsenal correspondent at 3-5, who say that Arsenal controlled the game and should have won and did everything well apart from get the ball in the back of the net in the final third and win. Yet they still went 1-0 down. If you look at the highlights, uh, Callum Wilson and particularly Josh King coming in off the wing were a threat throughout the game. Um, and Arsenal's finishing was quite poor, including Lacazette missed a couple of decent chances um, that you'd think that he would put away. I don't know. Uh, basically, from a Bournemouth point of view, they're so hit and miss that I wouldn't look at anyone. I know you're thinking about Callum Wilson other than maybe Josh King, but I feel like Danny Ings is probably a better shout than, than Josh King. I don't really want to go mad on Bournemouth. I've got Ramsdale no. and Rico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having said, I'd never have Bournemouth defensive players again. By the way, Rico is sitting for me as like third, third sub every week. Because that's where he gets care. his points. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. He can just sit there and do that job. It's fine. Um, so it's, Ar a, it's a placeholder from a, a value perspective for me. Mm -hmm. Arsenal, on the other hand, I want to see some consistency before going back anywhere close to looking at any Arsenal players. And again, the pool of players that you can pick from is Aubameyang and Aubameyang. Yeah, just to cover Callum Wilson briefly. Yes, he's in my thoughts, probably at a selling Kane point of view. I don't think he'll start at Brighton this weekend. I think Bournemouth's starting lineup. He's very unpredictable. Other than Rico, because he was suspended, will play at left back. On Arsenal, I think it's one a statistic that sums up the game for them yesterday is is the most shots they've had in an away game so far this season. They only had two on target. Yeah, I did look at the stats, looking at thinking, well, Bournemouth have created as many chances. Whether or not they're the stats don't tell you the quality of the chances and all of that kind of thing, but. You know, I, I suppose 1-1 one, one is is the result that we got. I'm not looking at either of these two teams from an FPL point of view. Talking about Rico, right? We're, we're all in a situation, and I say we all, like you are, I am, and I've noticed a number of the top teams with Kelly and Rico and Lundstrom. All, well, Lundstrom's now whatever he is, 5 million, but the others are 4.2, 4.3. And they're good value at 4.2, 4.3, right? So... Now that you've got Trent and Robbo, there are a handful of defenders at five 
million or five to five and a half million, Sadibi being one, Aurier being another one, um, maybe another one of the Leicester guys in Pereira. But Pereira is a bit more expensive, but even Suyunchu, that I'm not going near because I think that I've got these cheapies in and they're good bench fillers and they're great cheapies to have. But are we going to then potentially miss out on some attacking defender points that are mid tier? But then I'm thinking, do I? Of course to, we are. To, to do Ain't that, gonna get you 24 points though. To do that, I need to change my format. I'm playing a three-four-three right now. I need to go to back to a five-three-two, which we were back to big at the back in the beginning. But maybe big at the back with five-ish mid million pound mid defenders because the back line of Lundstrom, Sidibe, Aurier, Robbo, and Trent is pretty decent. Which one of them are you leaving out? No, play all five. But then you're playing a five-three-two. I think I'm going to end up going towards a 4-4-2 or 4-3-3, depending on where I end up value-wise, which will be Trent, Robertson, Lundstrom most weeks. But I am seriously considering going back to VAR. And I don't mean VAR the Abraham Rashford. No. I mean Van Dijk, Alexander-Arnold, Robertson. Yeah, it's in my faults. Mm. If there's a regret from my wild card, it's not having more Liverpool defensively. Because as scary as it was watching Salah and Mane last night as well, like I know that during this period of January, I'm not captain them unless that West Ham double game week gets dropped yep. in there somewhere, which at the moment it's not. No. Um, Chelsea lost again. Couldn't believe it. I don't know what's going on there. I mean, a lot of people had the armband on Tammy Abraham this week because potentially we even spoke about one of the best options from a captaincy point of view. Uh, Jorginho back in the team because of Kovacic's suspension. And yet they've gone and uh, rolled over for Southampton, who played okay. They, with Hassan Hootl, when he gets them playing the way he wants them to play, they um, they play with intensity and they press well. And they're hard to play against. They just sometimes lack some attacking quality, but played well. But they scored two goals and Danny Ings had no attacking... Uh, it was left out, wasn't uh, it? No attacking points. Yeah, regardless. Was Danny Ings, they scored without Danny it, Ings being involved in the goals. I think the Danny Ings one was the same as the Morpé one in terms of looked at it and gone, right, we definitely want Danny Ings against Palace mm. at the weekend. Let's give him a break here. Let's use him at the end of the game if we need to. So Danny Ings is another one who would be a good good potential punt for the weekend. They do have tougher fixtures afterwards, Southampton. I, I did consider briefly, and I, I just thought it was madness, Alex McCarthy in goal. And you know why, don't you? It's just because he's the cheapest. Cheapest. At 4.3 million. And then you're thinking, wow, not only am I coming off heat and at home to Norwich, could I go McCarthy away to Chelsea? No, 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 scrap that. This is ridiculous. But South Chelsea didn't overly trouble them. One moment right at the start of the second half where Abraham should have had a bit more composure from a ball from Mason Mount after he'd come on. But otherwise, they weren't under any real duress. And, like, defensively, it's getting better for them with the stevens Bednarek partnership. It's becoming noticeably obvious. It certainly was in the Villa game, and it looked it from the highlights again yesterday, that Ryan Bertrand is now pushing back onto the Ryan Bertrand that used to be an FPL asset a few years ago. And I think the big difference for Southampton is this ward prowse Hoiberg partnership in midfield, which is allowing four players in front to go and express themselves. And the balance is just right for them at the moment. Yep. But they they do need to pick up results in home games that they've, that they've got coming up because the sustainable, you ain't going to win back-to-back away games that often. They need to be picking up results in home games. And therefore, unfortunately, Southampton still don't appeal from an FPL point of view. I don't know what to do with Chelsea assets. I mean, at the moment... I don't own any. At the moment, well, I'm in the same position. I'm, I'm not looking at getting any but back I, but I, I think I've got to a point without owning one. I can't like, sit here chance. and pretend that... The, the one that... It, I'd made a decision Christmas Day for sure I was going Kane. But before that, I'd been strongly thinking about Abraham and knowing that going Abraham over Kane was going to spread my funds so much better. You out right there, man, child? What's wrong with spreading my funds? I could be, I could be, I could be spreading worse things, couldn't I? <laughs> like diseases. <laughs> yeah, true. I don't have any, by the way, that I know of. Um, 
Yeah, Tammy. Tammy's I, I not. What do you do with them? Like people, one the regular question. What do we do with Pulisic? Oh, well, Pulisic's got to go now. Got to go now, isn't he? Yeah, I think I got I got lucky with getting rid of him two weeks ago uh, with Pulisic, and I've had no returns in Richarlison, but he still scored more points than Pulisic. Do they do they stay with this back three now, or do they go back to a, a four at Arsenal at the, at the weekend? I would suggest the more attacking players they've got on the pitch away to Arsenal, the more to their benefit it would be. Yeah. So if they can get William Mount Pulisic on the pitch with Abraham and play, I suppose, it, I don't know which one. I've done. <laughs> Can't leave Kovacic out. They're always missing when he doesn't play. Mm. You're right there, pal. Very well, thank you. <laughs> I was just, uh, or Manchester. Manchester, come around here. It's just Give everybody a wave mic. and say welcome back. We'll welcome How you was, back. How uh, was New York, mate? New York was cold, man. New York was, was cold. cold. You know, snowing. It, it was. It did snow. I thought you were a Liverpool supporter for a little while. I worry we, about we this guy. I really, really and worry a half about years. him. Did you bump into uh, Josh and Brandon from Always Cheating in Brooklyn, mate? Uh, Do you even know what they look like? He didn't well, come to I the meetup. I bumped into a very angry guy in Brooklyn, about five foot seven, bald, glasses. I think Josh. Uh, Brandon's a bit taller than that. Taller, yeah. Brandon's a bit taller than that. Yeah. He, he might have been, you know. Let us know, Brandon. Are you taller yeah. than five seven? I think he's definitely taller than yeah, five. Yeah, he's he taller is, than yeah, me, yeah. and I'm five nine. So. Yeah. yeah. I heard the news this morning, and then I, f- I forgot who you. What news? That Liverpool might they have the Liverpool biggest might. they have the biggest um, advantage. Oh, look at this points <laughs> ever um, that they've ever had, and they haven't won the um, Premier League since 1950. Then them beating Leicester last night put them even like Leicester were second and now there's even more of a gap and you know there's a lot of research that goes into this show folks <laughs> and you just heard it all uh, man child dropping yeah. bombs on planet of field yes. so they? I decided this morning if I ever log into my FPL I will be changing all my players to Liverpool yeah you only allowed three per club mate yeah sorry about go. that oh every day is a school day just oh, make sure go. Alexander Arnold was one of them <laughs> Crystal Palace 2, West Ham 1. Let's keep it going. We've got plenty of games to get through. Um, I'm assuming you only saw the highlights of it as opposed to watching the whole game. I intentionally watched least, the least of this of any game because I knew that you would fill in the blanks, mate. Uh, well, as soon as we... We knew that Zabaleta was going to play uh, because Fredericks was injured and so Zaha might have a field day there. And there was outside chance that uh, Fabianski might be fit again, but also that Martin and Fabianski could both be out and Roberto was going to play. And we had the worst possible situation of them all, which was Roberto and Zabaleta against Wilf Zaha and and co. Um, Ultimately, it wasn't really a very good game. You'd say that Palace definitely had the better of the game. Um, They controlled it. When they attacked, they were more incisive. So their chances were better quality. Um, having said that, we did have a few chances. Um, first half was probably more even. Second half, they sat deep and then hit us on the counter. Um, we scored against the run of play. That goal was purely down to Antonio's persistence. And then that nice slide ball through. Lovely inside pass. It was a great pass, but he, would, he it was the sheer strength. Uh, and nice to see him not in fucking fancy dress coming onto the pitch. Did you see a snowman? <laughs> no. Oh, you need to see. <laughs> I feel like the only person you follow on social media is Mikel Antonio. If I only followed Mikel Antonio, my life would still be good because he's so funny on Twitter. But um, it wasn't a good game. Like Zaha is a question for a lot of people. He played well, you know, his tricks. Oh, trickery that doesn't stuff. help, does it? No, there was no end product. <laughs> but if I owned him and I watched the whole game, there would still be 20 to 30% of me that would be like, you know what, at some point he is going to come good so if you've if you're holding him until new years keep on him i wouldn't recommend selling oh, zaha right now <laughs> i wouldn't recommend selling zaha right now um and i put a tweet out like i'm gonna stick with I, i'm not calling for pellegrini's head and i'm not getting behind but on the backs of the team right now because when i saw roberto in goal i expected to lose and what happened we lost two games against palace this season where IU scored in the 87th minute at our place in the 90th minute. So, do you know what I mean? <laughs> you mean the Jordan IU who you asked me a couple of weeks ago, why is he in your FPL yeah, squad, exactly. Jordan IU? And he's yeah. gone now, yeah? So, knew, have you had any was... of his points? No, of no. course not. I wouldn't have started him yesterday. He would, he would have been the one sitting on the bench yeah. for me. So, I mean, he played points. well, don't get me wrong. And his goal was class. I mean, it, it, oh, brilliant, wasn't it? A little trickery through, but uh, yeah, I didn't expect anything. I'm not going to judge 
the team or anything until Fabi's been back for three or four games, um, which will end up taking us through to the end of January. But I put out there, we've got, um, we need from the next six games before we play City, we have uh, Leicester twice, Bournemouth, Everton, Southampton and Brighton. We need nine points from those six games. God, I tell you what, them fixtures don't sound as good as they should. Yeah. I'm thinking about need- Everton now under Ancelotti, at Leicester we know, uh, Bournemouth of an amazing run of fixtures. Brighton, they'll outplay. Brighton, you. Everton, and uh, Bournemouth are home fixtures. Then we've is got that a good thing? Leicester home and away, uh, and then Southampton is oh no, is it Southampton? It's a another game anyway. It's Sheffield United, sorry, uh, which is away. So look, we need nine points from those. I'm not calling for Pellegrini's head. Fabianski plays five of those six games, and we don't get nine points. Then we have to make the change before it's too late. But I mean, it might already be quite late. It's not. I don't think it is because of how tight the bottom five or six around where we are are. But you know what? I think it's just going to make such a big difference. And let me just give you a couple of examples, right? Um, the thing with Roberto is he, he he loves to go down, and I know how dodgy that sounds, but he loves to when he's when he's coming out uh, um, to to stop any to to close anyone down and that it doesn't even mean if they're attacking from quite deep you can't particularly blame on them goals yesterday surely the first goal I mean it wasn't that far away he he went to ground very early for Kiyatu's shot and it wasn't that far away from him he could have done I feel like he could have done better he's on the floor so I mean what's he he meant to do uh, not Hurahan um, Wickham Connor Wickham had the one on one with Roberto that he saved right it's a good save if you look at it uh, and this is being critical. He'd gone down. He was on his elbow. The ball hit his arm. So he he didn't save it. I think Wickham should have done better there. He ha- it happened to hit him because he'd gone down so early. So I would think Roberto got a little lucky yesterday as well. He could have conceded. My three opinion, or four. reading between the lines, is that Fabianski will play on Saturday. My opinion is that. It- if he had one leg and one arm, I'd still fucking play him on Saturday right now. Um, I think it was just the case that timing-wise he was ready and the decision was made not to make him play two games in three days. Correct. Because you can't afford to be with, as proven, you can't afford to be without him again for eight, ten weeks, however long it's been. So I think the decision was made that save him for the second one. If he'd have played against Palace and then didn't play against Leicester, that would have seemed bizarre to people, I think. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, okay, couple of extra days, ready for Saturday. I think Fabianski will play on Saturday. Mm. Palace could be, you could make the case that pound for pound, Palace are outperforming the ability of their individual players more than any club this season when you look at them you look at like the likes of MacArthur and Milivojevic and whatever whoever else I mean even Riedewald didn't play badly yesterday had a couple who uh, made one particularly good he last he did make a great block. block from Snodgrass and he's so, ropey as as yeah. well so it's the sum of the some of the parts being greater uh, than any individual there at Palace um, I, I just don't think they're going to score enough goals to make them interesting from an FPL point of view they'll sneak ones and twos and they're just never going to be explosive um, I, and if they do concede a goal, they lost all the defensive points. It's full credit to them that they are where they are in the in the league, considering the injuries they've had. Mm. So you could say, okay, yeah, defensively they're solid, but they've had, you know, Joe Ward's been out for a while. Cahill's been in and out. Um, Van Aanholt might have picked up a knock again now. Further up the field, Townsend's out now. Jeffrey Schlupp, who's covering for Van Arnholt, is now injured. Benteke might be injured now, which might be a, a blessing, although Jordan Ayew had obviously been playing regularly anyway. I think it's full credit to them because they don't have a big squad. They've had injuries. They always give themselves a chance in games because they are good defensively and they know they have a great player who can carry them up the, the pitch. My concern with Zaha, I know what you're saying, don't sell him. And uh, timing-wise, it's awful for me because really the swap I should be making on New Year's Day, if that's when I'm going back to Robertson, is Zaha down, Lindelof to Robertson. There should be nothing to think about. And I think of Zaha away to Norwich. That's what I'd be selling on. And I'm like, oh my God. And then you look at uh, next week's Arsenal. Oh, now I can't sell him. Uh, And then next week's Man City and you go, yeah, I sell. And then you look at Palace's fixtures after City and you go, 
I might keep this bastard for three, four months here, you know. Yep. Now that I don't think can happen. The biggest thing for me was Zaha. I know what you're saying. Of course he's a threat. He he drags people near him. He's got insane ability. Where he will let himself down from being a top, top player is when I look at his positioning on a lot of Palace goals, he's not even in the box. You never see this fella score a tapping or anything, do you? No. It's always taking someone on. I don't on. know. He, uh, he did create He doesn't chances, get himself in the right in the positions to be the sort of player that's going to score 15-odd goals a season. No, but you're paying £6.5 million pounds for him no, in FPL. I get so. that, but the chances are that certainly come next summer at the latest, he probably won't be playing for Palace. I'm telling you, he's not going to be a top player elsewhere because... He doesn't get himself in a position to be scoring enough goals. On the flip side, okay, put it this way. Uh, what is Zaha? Seven, six, four? Uh, he's now six, seven. I've had 0.3 six, rise seven. off him. Wow. How's that happened? Give me, give me the option of 6.4 on Grealish or 6.7 on Zaha right now. I'll take Grealish all day long because I feel like his end product is a little bit more direct in Grealish. So I'd rather take Grealish over Zaha. I don't know if that helps the thought process or decision making. But he wasn't bad yesterday and he wasn't, not creative yesterday. He was okay. He was good. He gave Zabaleta a, a hard time. Um, yeah, so uh, there's there's no West Ham assets worth looking at at all yet. Uh, with Antonio, you want to see him play more consistently for a little while yet, but uh, he may be an outside random punt if you really he, want to He be is random. of interest to me, Antonio. Mm. I think if I'd have known that Fabianski was going to play yesterday, I'd have got him in on a wild card. Interesting. Purely on the basis of it will give the team a lift and, in fact, three reasons. Two, I've had very good historical results of Fabianski. So like, okay, this guy's done this for me before, both at Swansea and at West Ham. And three, we know that double's going in there somewhere. And I don't mind having the West Ham goalkeeper, even though one of those fixtures is Liverpool for a double game week. Yeah, I'm more than happy Sorry. to have that. When you said that, when you said if I'd have known Fabianski was playing, I would have fired him in on the wild card. I thought you were talking about Antonio, which was still the conversation that we were having. Uh, not Antonio, Sorry. no. So if Fabi was fit, you'd have got Fabian on the wild if card. I don't, yeah, if, yeah, if yeah. Pellegrini was said Fabianski's going to play, I'd have got him in. Mm. I think Fabianski would be my goalkeeper too uh, in a couple of weeks' time when I move away from Heaton because they've got... A cu- Bad fixtures after the next one. How I'm going to find the money, I don't know yet. But I think Fabi will be my goalkeeper as well. Um, so we we'll both end up with Fabianski in goal. Um, I'll know more after the Leicester game um, this weekend because I'll see us live and we'll see if Fabi does in fact play. Our friend Carlo Ancelotti gets off to a winning start um, with Everton, although it wasn't the best performance from what I've seen on the highlights and what people are saying, but. Burnley, after a few good results, lose again, albeit 1-0. Uh, back-to-back clean sheets for Everton. Uh, interestingly, a little bit of a different system with Coleman uh, playing at right-sided centre-half. I'm not sure how long that will stay for, but it kind of makes sense with him ageing a little bit more. He's still a good footballer, just can't do the flank business in quite the same way that he, he did it in his peak. And with Sadibi ahead of him, it kind of makes sense. Sadibi's a a possible here, you know, 5.3. Yeah. It was one I considered. I just thought with Coleman in the background and obviously not thinking they'd go to three at the back, I'm looking at it and going, Sadibi plays one here, Coleman plays one, doesn't he? That's what I'm thinking. And that's that was the number one reason. That every time I was looking at fullbacks for that wild card as short-term punts, I was like, yeah, every single one of them's a rotation riskier. In which case, I might as well just fire different avenues. So... I went for the reliability of starts, which is not something you should generally do on FPL, but you should at Christmas time. Well, if they're short term, I think it's not such a bad bad decision. Sadibi's the one here to look at, Everton. Mm, he really is really at 5.3, but uh, we'll come back to the conversation we were just briefly having. I don't know if it's worth breaking the formations. The one that I would get rid of would be Rico for me to get Sadibi in. I'd leave Kelly and Lundstrom. I can't lose those two, but it'd be Rico that would go. Um <laughs> I'd want yeah. to see more because we don't know at this stage. It's one game. We haven't seen Everson play three at the back too often. I think he's probably identified and looked at it and gone, oh, I've got really two really good attacking wing backs here or full backs. Why don't we play a back three? And then you can get all the guys like Sigurdsson and Bernard in, and Richarlison all into central areas. And it kind of makes sense, but we don't know if they're going to stay with that. Mm. You know, our different challenge at weekend against the Newcastle side who also will play with wing backs or very defensive full backs if you will in a back five 
and they might decide to go a different route. Go, okay, right, we'll go back to a 442 or 4231. So, yeah. The other one to mention is Holgate. It's 4.4, is now getting a real run in the side. I think those who gambled in on Richarlison are probably already really frustrated. A little. <laughs> Returns in all the big games, doesn't in the ones you expect him to. I think that's part of the course for him. I think there are better, cheaper options at the moment, or it's worth paying a little bit more for the likes of Deli Alley. I think mm. Deli Alley's points per game this season is more than Sun and Sterling. Uh, well, he's had a couple of big monster halls, isn't he? Though? I mean, Sun's is influenced by two red cards as yeah. well, is worth saying. But yeah. And Deli Alley's is concentrated in a few games where he that's, really. That's why I think Alley's been the, the big gamble. I mean, it's mm. 5.9 per game. Which is a it's a big drop off of the big free Salah, um, KDB, Marnie yeah. and KDB, but they're more than Sterling. Yeah, uh, Everton. Uh, I'm only looking at uh, Richarlison, who I have at the moment, and maybe Sidibe. Burnley Pope picked up save points again, three pointer. Defensively, look, they only conceded the one goal, not twos or threes like a few others did this weekend. But there's no one else really at, at Burnley catching the eye. At the nah, moment. just a note that Goodmanson. Came on yesterday. Uh, he's been out for quite a while. Back fit. Uh, one to possibly wa- watch out for in kind weeks if you want. If you're Uber, child. Differential. But I think, yeah, Burnley falls down to Pope. Charlie Taylor, if you want a, a, a good cheap defender to sit as fifth sub or third sub rather. And Chris Wood up front if it takes your fancy. But fixtures ain't great on paper. I think they'll be absolutely fine, Burnley, but not looking at them at the moment. No. Uh, Sheffield United won, Watford won. Uh, I mean, bearing in mind Sheffield United's form and the fact that it was an away fixture for Watford, that's a great point for Watford. It doesn't help them in the league. You're still looking at them in the league, only two no, wins that all does. season. That's a good result. Yeah, but 13 points. I mean, they're still six points off us and they've got a lot of work to do, Watford, still. Yeah. Improvement, still improvement. And you'd feel more confident than you did uh, three weeks ago. It's a tough game for anyone now, Watford. I know you've got them soon, right? I think. Are you playing Watford uh, soon? mid Jan, yeah. yeah. I really did look at them defensively. I really had a bit of time and looked at them. And I considered Femini as 4.2. He's playing out of position at left back at the moment. Now, as of when Holly Bass is back fit or he fancies putting Messina in, then there's every chance Femini will go back to right back where Mariapa's playing at the moment. So it looks at Mariapa as well, but I thought, mm, that's maybe dodge. And obviously this Cabasele, Cathcart is the more reliable one who is 4.3 at the moment. They seem to be, him and Cabasele seem to be getting favour over Dawson, who's way too expensive. But I decided there was too much uncertainty about him defensively. But I think Nigel Pearson's got him going in the right direction. They've actually got a chance here. They really have. We've got fixtures coming up. I, I think they'll beat Villa this weekend. Then it's another home game against Wolves, which... Yeah, paper, it's tough. Bournemouth away, you never know what you're going to get. Then Spurs at home, then Villa again. Mm. They've given themselves a chance, Everton at home. You know, the honeymoon period might be over for, for Everton by then. Yeah. Don't know where they'll be at. So there's a run of fixtures. Watford need to do it now, but they've given themselves a chance. You're saying there's six points behind you, yeah? Yeah. Oh, those are the best that, I bet that this time next week it won't be. Could be. Could be. Uh, who, have you got, who have you got next midweek? Bournemouth at home on New Year's Day. It's a big game. Very, very big game. Manchester United 4, Newcastle 1. I bet Matty Longstaff wishes he could play Man United every week. You know how many Blades followers we got and you've not talked about them at all. Well, I'm conscious that we've been recording for an hour and we've still got two games to talk about. Just one thing, my my favourite moment of the weekend, which might have gone past people, was Ben Foster's save from John Fleck. Yep. Um... Where it's come across Save the, of the, the box. No, 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 not at all. But the camera pans in on a close shot on Foster when he saves it, and you can see him mouthing, I don't know, which I presume was in response to the how question of that? how did you save that? Yeah. <laughs> it's just got, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just, I love that. Brilliant. Uh, Man United 4, Newcastle 1. For, for, I watched this uh, as well. The first 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes, wasn't smooth sailing for Manchester United, but once they clicked in, I don't know what happened really with Newcastle. They just got steamrolled a little bit. Yeah, watching the game unfold. If you didn't watch the game, you think, oh yeah, United have pissed that easy. 
United started dominant, as you would expect, and then Newcastle had a 10-minute spell where every time they won it, United were so open. You mm. thought, no, Newcastle could score again here. And it just didn't look right. And you're sitting there and you're watching the game and you're thinking, wow, May United going through the same thing here. And you don't want to go 1-0 down against a side like Newcastle, I can no. tell you. Then on reflection... The game changes on, obviously, each goal, which the Bravka should save Marshall's shot. Yep. It's not the first lucky one they've had in that corner. I'm thinking Gazaniga against Rashford uh, three or four weeks ago. The pass, I think it was Fabian Shah, give it to Greenwood, and he, he smashed it in. He took it really well, the lad. 4.3 we should be considering if we if we want to go down that route. He smashed it in, but it's, a, it's an error. The third goal, I think, is sloppy because they think there's a foul in the build-up and wan is not the sort of player you should be letting get round you and get a cross in like that because he doesn't do it often enough. You know, Just force him home, force him defensively because he's got the pace to get round people, mm. but he doesn't really have the confidence normally to put that ball in, so force him into the safe option. And then there's a kamikaze for the fourth as well and the game's over and... United played some some nice stuff for 10 minutes or so afterwards where it looked like Martial hit the post, looked like he could really take it away. And I think naturally, with Pogba back on the pitch and then winning a the game comfortably, they're actually enjoyable to watch, United. Although I think Newcastle got certainly got to a stage in the game where we were like, OK, another game Saturday, let's just accept this. Like Almiron got taken off and stuff. Marshall's annoying because I said on the pod last week, I can't stand how lazy he is. But then, uh, was it on the first goal or in the build up? Certainly on a couple of goals. One, he went and pressed the goalkeeper. And there yeah. was one, he actually tracked back and, and won the ball off someone as well. He looked really up for it yesterday. He's a guaranteed I don't know starter. Why. Uh, he's not going to be dropped. Well, him and Rashford, importantly, both got taken off early, which to get rested, right? Suggests as much, yeah, yeah. to play against um, Burnley. He's seven point seven million. Yeah, he's uh, one point two cheaper than Deli Ali, for yeah. example. If you had to buy one or the other now, would you take Martial or Deli Ali? Deli Ali. There's not a lot in it. Ali's five point nine points per game. Martial five point five. Mm. Once you add in, obviously, the 1.2 million difference, that's not bad. You know, Marshall's pushing at, at some seriously good numbers there. Yeah. But he, he will be. The problem with Marshall, he's going to piss you off if you own him because you're going to have weeks where you're watching him and you're like, he touched the ball. Yeah. Play. But can't argue at the value. I might well end up with him. I know as soon as I do, he'll get injured. That'll be rubbish. <laughs> um, it's the curse. On Pogba who the Sky players will have noticed. I think he had shot and passed in tier in like one off yesterday. <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm. McTominay was injured, I think very early in the game, made it to half time, might have ligament damage. Apparently um, left Old Trafford on crutches, certainly won't play at the weekend. If McTominay's out, it probably means Pogba deeper. We want to see Pogba at 10. Also, Jesse Lingard didn't start. So I presume that was to save Lingard to play at 10 against Burnley. So expect Pogba in a deep line role, yeah. which makes him less attractive, I'm afraid. Uh, he's still attractive, He's though. still capable, don't get me wrong, like, yeah. in terms of his creativity, the amount of shots he'll have on goal, just a little bit less than where you you really want to see him play, I think, that, that Christmas period when we got him in last year. So at the moment, Paul Pogba is a no for me. I'd actually still, I would go to Martial first. So I've got mm. Rashford, obviously. Yeah, and the last game yesterday, Liverpool for less than nil ended up being um, a masterclass from Liverpool. Really, just uh, a lot of people I spoke to, even a couple of my mates that I spoke to on Boxing Day. One of my cousins came around, not Boxing Day, Christmas Day in the evening. We're like, look, Liverpool will travel back from Qatar. They're going to be tired. The don't. This is going to be a tough game. They're away from home. Ended up being. Champions of champions, man. They Leicester didn't get a glove on them, really. Best performance by any team in any league game so far this season by a distance. I, I'll probably include the Leicester 9-0 and the Man City 8-0 and those. Mm. Like, Liverpool were phenomenal. They could have got 6-7 or more last night. 4-0 with only one attacking return out of Salah and Mane. 
incredible. I met our, our friends, Lee and Sam from FPL family at, at Spurs yesterday, took their young boy Max to the game. I met them briefly before the game. And after about a minute of conversation, I said, oh, Lee, really sorry. And he said, what's up? I said, congratulations, mate, yeah. on that title win. And they were all doing the same thing. I had to tell Marzi boy at half time yesterday. I was like, Mars, stop all this. Uh, yeah, you know, concentrate. Got to score more goals. Listen, if you don't want to say it, that's fine. Don't say nothing. Just say, great win, lads. On to the next. Because this is over. Your team is way too good. Man City could win every game left. They are still not getting near Liverpool. It's finished. It's over. It's done. And yes, what you say in terms of FPL aspects, I mean, even for Salah owners, the fact that he gets taken off and a minute later I've got a penalty <laughs> Milner scores. You just can't believe. I mean, chances Salah and Mane missed in that first half. The, the Mane one, which he tried to give Schmeichel the eye as early in the first half. You can't believe he didn't score. Hey, Liverpool could have been... I mean, two efforts on goal in the first minute. Yeah. Alexander-Arnold had the shot and then Mane from a brilliant ball in from Salah. So the returns in the game in terms of the assets could have been very, very different. Firmino, who always seems to do well Christmas time, got a couple of goals, took both really well. I think once get beyond this weekend, because I think there could be some rotation this weekend, we need to get back to... The, the thing is with them now, like, as good as they've been, we always knew they could be better. Like, now they've, now they've played well. We're like, what are we going to do now? And I think the only the only choice going forward is forget the fixtures. How are we going to play it? Are we going to go Salah and Mane? Are we going to go double defensive? Are we going to go treble defensive? I'm tempted to go treble defensive and eke out the value elsewhere because I still don't believe, as good as they've been, I don't see me captain the Salah or Mane throughout January unless the double game week happens. Because there are there are just others with unbelievable fixtures like Vardy quite often that I don't think I can look beyond. I'm on Robertson and Trent. I want Sadio Mane. Now, Salah's gone to back to being more expensive than Sadio Mane. Salah's gone up to 12.3. Mane's in 12.2. Uh, if I get rid of Richarlison... And I can pick up a Grealish or whoever uh, at the best part of a million cheaper. That gives me more than enough money to get Sterling to, to Sadio Mane. And that may be the one, rather than going back from Sterling to Sun and putting the money elsewhere, I may just bite the bullet and get Mane in because triple Liverpool for me is, yeah, looking like a must all the way up until Champions League starts again. Um, so yeah, after this weekend, it may even be Mane that comes in for Sterling and I'll have to bin Richarlison or Madison and it's probably Richarlison it's going to have to be the one that, that makes way Madison served me so well all season and I've got a shit ton of value left up in him as well yeah I thought I didn't understand what um, we have to criticise Brendan Rodgers because we've, we've praised him so much this season I did not understand that playing Madison against Alexander-Arnold just killing yourself for trouble mate mm. um, and Spurs will have the same problem we play Liverpool in mid-January, if he decides he wants to play Son against Alexander-Arnold. Yeah. And that's Son coming back from suspension. If that's what he's going to have, a massive problem. Massive, massive problem. Because the thing with Trent is, he'll go to the byline, but he can do it from 40 yards out as well. Oh, it's just, it's, his right foot is something else. His, his precision of his crossing, he's outstanding. We're talking Beckham levels now. Mm. Like, phenomenal. And we're talking about a defender here. First the thing is, the uh, one of the year. things people keep saying is, oh, he's so good, should he play further forward? And I'm in strong disagreement with that because I think he's one of those players who... And actually, Beckham wasn't too dissimilar. For a guy who played so often right midfield, you know, he wasn't like a winger that was kind of pushing to get in behind the fullback. He likes to see the game. Um, he has amazing vision. He obviously likes that big crossfield pass to Robertson as well. Not only Robertson for me last night was disastrous. I yeah. got away with it. And you can argue not having Mane and Salah got away with it as well. Mm -hmm. So I need to amend that. The priority for me is Robertson. However, the interesting thing is, and this is where value is interesting, is if you're an Alex, a Robertson owner and you haven't got Alexander-Arnold, let me tell you that loads of people 
will be making that move. Sideways. Loads. And just think, oh, all the things Alexander-Arnold's got, uh, whatever it was, 17 points more than Robertson or whatever. I ain't, I just remember that you got the Robertson there as well. Robertson absolutely should have been hitting double points last night as well. Yeah, I want both of them. Mm. It's a big mistake for my wild card. I should have sacrificed, even though it didn't hurt me yesterday, I should have done that and been brave and gone from what my instinct's been all season on them too. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on, <coughs> excuse me, what's Cough your up. thoughts on uh, tonight's game, Wolves, Man City? I think it's very, it's very difficult to say because I don't know what the City team will be. I wouldn't, be surprised if Wolves beat them. I think City are going to go there and win three or four. I think they just they, they, they need to they need to prove a point here. How good does City? We lauded City on the pod earlier in the week for the performance against Leicester. How good did that performance look now after watching Liverpool against Leicester? Yeah, that was astonishing. Like they were so good to watch. You you could only not enjoy watching Liverpool last night if you really care way too much about FPL, I'm sorry, and you don't own Trent, or if you're an Everton fan or a Man United fan. Like, otherwise, even if even if you dislike Liverpool, like probably majority of people dislike Liverpool in the way they dislike Man United, you can't not watch them and go, wow, the intensity of these guys, the way they play, brilliant. Mm. This title is long done. Whilst I pull up the Twitter questions, and we'll rattle through a few of those, we can't make it too long. People have only got like 24 hours to listen to this shit before the next game week deadline, which is exactly 24 hours from now. Um, we'll, we'll rattle through some Twitter questions. Why don't you let everybody just, just, know? Just what I remember, because I did want to say, Nabi Cater for an hour last night, brilliant as well. Someone mm. we haven't mentioned, and I thought he was absolutely terrific. Sorry, go on. Uh, I was going to say, why don't you let the listeners know what we've got between now and New Year's Day? Um, whilst I pull up these Twitter questions. We'll answer a handful of those and then let you tinker with your team. I would like some help from you, Twitter universe, uh, particularly from our YouTube followers. We will be streaming live as our live stream of the month tomorrow lunchtime between uh, the game between Brighton and Bournemouth at 12.30pm UK time um, before Sidge goes off to watch West Ham and I go off to watch Spurs because we're both playing at 530 I'd like to hear some longer topics that you'd like us to discuss during our YouTube stream. They do not have to be FPL related, but it'd be nice for us to have a good chat. Do come and join us at live chat. Do watch the game. Stick it on mute. Watch it with us. We'll have the, the incoming 3 p.m. team news that we'll, we'll analyse. We'll be on from 12.30 to 2.30 tomorrow. We will be back on Monday reviewing all the Game Week 20 action ahead of game week 21 which begins on Wednesday and we're actually going to have a few days off and then we'll be back on Friday uh, to review game week I'm lost now 21 <laughs> uh, 19 2021 20, correct yeah which is New Year's Day correct plus one yeah um, so we'll be recording before the Liverpool game on us before the Friday night game there's no Friday night game next week next week yeah no, next week's FA, next weekend's, weekend's FA Cup. Weekend's the FA Cup. Uh, so where am I looking at here? Yeah, so so we're recording after the Thursday game, which is Yes, uh, we'll wait till after yeah, Liverpool. Yeah. There's no point rushing it with no Premier League for eight days or so yeah. after that. So we will record after Liverpool, Sheffield United. So we'll be full podcast Monday, Friday, the specials, Tottenham, Sky, etc. We're not doing next week. We are going to have a little bit of downtime. I know, lazy bastards, everyone just Wait, goes, lazy bastards. The day after next, for, so the 4th, I'm away for four days, Saturday till Tuesday. So I'm going on holiday and I don't give a shit. So we have to figure out uh, as well. So we're probably having to pre-record shit as well. Yeah, we'll do a few, we'll, we'll put it this way, we'll do more than anyone else is doing. I, I can guarantee That's that a, much. That's <laughs> probably nailed on, yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of these Twitter questions, shall we, before we uh, wrap up episode 3 million and... Five or whatever Go. it may Series be. Series three, episode 25. Alexander uh, the Great. Uh, uh, let's look at some good ones um, because we've answered a lot of the repetitive ones through looking at the fixtures. Ricky Saunders, our friend that you travelled to Wolves with. I captained Lundstrom and benched TAA. Should I quit <sighs> FPL immediately? Bloody hell. Ouch. <laughs> That's all I can say. Ouch. <laughs> Ricky, man, you should know better. We're friends. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. Um, we've got Adam 35 who our Arsenal correspondent 
Uh, are we going to re-record our best of the decade episode to now include Liverpool as the best team and Klopp <laughs> as the best manager? Yeah, possibly. Just yeah. a shout out to, we put an episode out, uh, the Premier League best of from 2000 and, uh, 2010 to 2019 uh, on Christmas Day. Do go back and have a listen to that. It's just over an hour long, really, really good listen. Um, and we run through best manager, best goal, all of that kind of stuff. On that. Suj, and you give yourself a pat on the back here, has actually oh. done some amazing work on the audio for that podcast, which I won't spoil for you, but I think we, I'm proud of it. I think it's really it good. good fun. Yeah. Definitely good fun. Um, Raj Deep Chakrabarty, this one's a, t- a Tottenham question and y- you were there, so you can answer it. Kane looked very tired during the last five to ten minutes against Brighton. Yeah. Any chance of him being rested? A chance, yes. He always looks shattered after every game. Mm. What does it matter? In my opinion, there are no alternatives to Kane and Ali up front for Spurs right now. I think today is just rest. Go and play the game again on Saturday. If he can take them off early, great. And But then, you know, it's four days to Southampton afterwards. It's the FA Cup the weekend after where they probably will get a break. I think today is just recuperation. Go. Uh, and another Spurs question from the Talking Dead at FPO underscore zombie do you hang on to Lucas Moura for another two game weeks or bin him now? Don't think Lucas Moura will play on Saturday. You don't? You think he's going to be rotated or rested or what have you? I think... Like, if Lucelso doesn't get a chance on Saturday, I think that's wrong. Ryan Sessegnon, by the way, I told you impress the kids, he might start, and he did. Mm. He ain't ready for this level, mate. No. I'm afraid to say. Not ready. At Shiva FPL, uh, are we sure enough of Vardy's rotation against West Ham to bench him? Well, we did speak about this based on the result yesterday. Maybe they can't afford to bench him. Um, but I don't think you can ever bench Vardy in the same way that you can't bench TAA or what have you. Because he can still come on in the last 10 to 15 minutes. West Ham are bad at the back. Bad. Think of it like this. He starts, he returns. Great. They need him at the end. He comes on, he returns. Great. They don't need him at all. He doesn't play. You've got your first sub. Do not be... It's just my opinion that because of his age, because of things that Roger said pre-Man City game, they'd have to rest him over this period. It makes complete sense that the game he would miss is the game at West Ham tomorrow. It's just my opinion. I think the way the game went yesterday actually increases the chances of him playing. Do not leave him out of your mm. team. Don't be a hero about it because the loss is going to be far worse than we will end up in the same thing. You should remember that 50% of people are going to start him. Mm. Quite a few are going to captain him, by the way. I wouldn't do that. By talking about Liverpool for, for a couple of minutes, we'll basically answer 50% of these Liverpool questions. So it boils into two categories. Yep. Salah versus Mane being one category <sighs> and the other being Salah Mane plus a defender or two defenders plus one of Salah and Mane? I think the two best assets are Robertson and Alexander. So, uh, and I'm with you on that. I think if you're going triple Liverpool, two defenders plus one of the attacking assets is the better way to go. Plus it makes it more affordable, right? You're not breaking your squad or team. I'm in a position where I obviously, I'd let Mane go Mm. to do other things, i.e. Captain Kane in these next couple of weeks because I knew I wouldn't Captain Mane. Is there a regret in terms of going back because I'm probably now going to be paying more than what I'd sold? Do I suck that up? Or do you look at Salah as the bigger differential at the moment, even though he's a bit more expensive? I've probably got time to make that decision. I think if you're going in for this weekend, the fact that Salah came off quite early would give you a little bit more security, but you really shouldn't be making a Salah Mane decision based on one game week unless your intention is to get Salah in and, and captain him Sunday, which I guess probably appeals a little bit more now. Mm. It's okay. I'd be very nervous about with like Shakiri and that in the background of captain them. Otherwise Salah should be all right for the weekend. Mm. I think uh, Mane is still the one to go to. And now that he's a little cheaper than Salah, it makes it uh, a little bit more of a straightforward he choice does look, for me. He does look fitter and sharper though, Salah. I was he surprised does, when he took him wrong, off. But- um, you know, they were winning by that he's point. So, the game was done. He's so greedy, Salah. So mm. greedy. And that's good for FPL. Um, er- Ermias uh, says he sold TAA two nights ago for the first time 
since the beginning of last season <laughs> for a possible son to Salah or Sterling this week. Now he wants him back ASAP. Uh, he also owns Pulisic and has lost 0.5 in value in Pulisic. What to prioritise? Getting Sun up to Salah, getting rid of Pulisic or bringing back TAA? Hang on, bringing back Pulisic? No, bringing back TAA or binning Pulisic. Oh, right, I see. Uh, the, the priority is to is to get rid of Sun's value. Yeah. He's I, not going to play for a while I yet. I, I, I don't understand. I mean... By all means, I'm, I'm sure everybody's circumstance is different, but I don't understand who people have been holding on to Sun. Mm. I think a lot of it is, oh, I've built up for 0 0.4, 0 0.5. I don't want to lose him. Remember, it's Liverpool's going to be first game back as well. I'm like, sack him off, mate. Get rid. Yeah. Um, we've got Louis here, Louis underscore FPL. Liverpool might not be the first team to go unbeaten or the first team to get to 100 points. But dare I say it, they might be the first to do both in the same season. Uh, and it's looking ominous at the moment. I don't think they will. I think we've seen how hard it is to go an entire season without losing I, a I game. I don't think they'll go unbeaten. Um, but I think uh, they're going to come pretty close. 100 points is very, very likely. Yeah, massively achievable. I mean, they're on course at the moment for like 110, aren't they? Yeah. So, I, honestly, I think if City win every single game they've got left, they won't catch Liverpool. Mm. I don't think they'll go unbeaten. But I I think it is realistic at this moment to think that Liverpool could well hit 100 points. Now, we might get to a stage in the season, don't forget, where they've got a tough Champions League tie against Atletico Madrid, which I, I wouldn't be surprised if they go out, actually. Um, just because it's sort of one with Simeone and that is it's a bad draw for Liverpool, actually, I think. But if, obviously, if they do go deep in the competition and they're like 12, 14 points clear in the league... They could afford to rest players into winning the title, couldn't they? Yeah. While they go for the Champions League as well. Mm. Um, let's wrap up with two last questions. We've got Ronan Mehigan, our friend who uh, asks questions very regularly. Is Del Stevens the best four point... <coughs> Bless, Bless me, you. I'm allergic to FPL. Is Del Stevens still the best <laughs> 4.4 million midfielder for the last spot when wildcarding Shalabar's assist and BPS at the weekend has now tempted him? No, not, not Shalabar is the, the no. Dale Stevens yeah. or then Donker's still Stevens, 4 .4. Stevens is the safest one. Obviously, I haven't been on wild card. I looked at that position a bit. I think there are three you consider. Shalabar's not one of them at the moment. So it's Stevens, then Donker. I'd thought about Hayden, but then he doesn't play for Newcastle. Yes, then you think, oh shit, actually, I've got the two long staff, Shelby, Hayden. Actually, it's not that secure in that position, is it? So it's Stevens or then Donker. Then Donker's secure at the moment. But then once Willy Bolly comes back at Wolves, they might shove Saiz to the other side. There's, do they then shove the formation back? So there's questions there. Dale Stevens is, is the safest. Don't forget for Watford, obviously, DeCorey was suspended yesterday for fifth yellow. He's back against Villa at the weekend and 100% DeCorey will be, will be back in the Watford team. Hughes and Capu are playing quite well. I know Hughes gave away the penalty yesterday, but he's been impressing us in that position for Watford. So see Shalibur as first choice back up. Uh, and the last question is a combo question coming from two people. You've got Brian at Blades Attack and you've got Jarvo at Ajarv19. Brian's question, time to abandon triple Leicester. And you've got Jarvo's question, Leicester's run looks good now that Liverpool is out of the way. Should we triple up on them again? Schizophrenia at its best. I'm doubled Vardy and uh, Madison. Vardy isn't going anywhere. Madison might. Not yet, but might. If I think Leicester um, don't react well to the two defeats in a week, because they, they, we knew they were unlikely to win the league anyway, but it's kind of like now, what do they have left to play for? Second, and it might even be now third. Um, there could be a little bit more hit and miss here. And they've, they're have they through to the semi-finals of the League Cup. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. They're going to want that trophy yep. and they've got a very winnable semi-final against uh, Aston Villa. So they're going to be yep. through to the final. You'd think touch wood. Um, and then the FA Cup starts up again. I mean, they've got such a good team that for a cup run, they could look at targeting the FA Cup as well. And they take a trophy any day of the week. Yep. So with Leicester, my advice would be don't look further than game week 24. So obviously play West Ham this game week and in game week 24. In between is Newcastle away, Southampton at home, Burnley away. 
which all on paper look great, but might not be when you consider Southampton's um, away form, for example. Turf Moor is always awkward. Certainly Vardy can't go anywhere during this spell. I think I will probably at this moment be captaining him in uh, probably three of those game weeks, I'd say at the minimum. The reason I say don't look any further is because what we don't know with Leicester yet is, remember, before the City defeat was a draw against Norwich. So it's now one point in three. Now, they shouldn't be in a position where they're looking over their shoulder at Chelsea, Tottenham, United, Wolves, Sheffield United, don't laugh, Arsenal. Um but we don't know how they're going to react, right? Has, has yeah. it really blown their confidence? What happens if they go to your place on Saturday and he rotates and, and they get beat again? It's not unthinkable that you can beat Leicester no. tomorrow, not at all. Then how do they react? Then they go to St. James's. Oh, what if they can't break them down? And then suddenly they're asking questions themselves. So what my advice with Leicester would be very simply, don't buy, don't sell. Mm, I'm with you on that as well. Um, that is that, James. Another episode ready for people to get ready for game week 20, uh, which is exactly around the corner. We have, uh, we do have, as Manchild has just walked into the room while we wrap up the show, we had one other question on Twitter, which I think it's fair to ask. Uh, so Ben Miller wants to know what you brought us back from New York. Yeah, that was in the comments. Uh, I brought you back memories. Memories <laughs> and the statistics around Liverpool. Apparently he brought us back a bag of Cheetos, but they, they blew up in the bag. Or in the aeroplane. Yeah, Can you imagine that? A bang going off in an aeroplane <laughs> with a guy like a man child, not stereotyping you in any way, shape or form. You can't say that. And then you say, don't worry, it was just Cheetos. <laughs> you can give them to uh, you can give them to DT from AFTV so you can post them to Simon Jordan because that was the, the cusp, wasn't it? Um, yes. Guys, do join us. Uh, if you are listening to this on the Friday, which is the 27th, for the Bournemouth... Uh, Brighton game, which is 12.30 on the Saturday. We'll be live streaming, so do jump in on that. Um, and then we'll be back at you on the Monday with another episode post-game week 20. Anything else to add? No. Uh, other than one final question, who will be your captain this game week as it stands? Don't know. <laughs> Simple as that. Don't I'll, know. I'll be on Harold again. Uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Yes. Ciao for now. Cue music, man, child. Welcome back. Why? Why?